Good morning and welcome to Rock Springs Church. We're so glad to have you with us. We're getting started in just a moment, but before we do, there are a few things that I want to tell you about coming up. On Sunday night, November 27th, we kick off Christmas at Rock Springs. One of the best singers in America, Taranda Green, will be here. Also on that night, we will be lighting the campus. Whatever you do, don't miss this special night. Speaking of Christmas, we are excited to announce that we'll be having the largest ice skating rink in a 50 mile radius here at Rock Springs. Each year, people come to know Jesus through our Christmas production. If you are interested in being a sponsor for Christmas at Rock Springs, you can grab an informational packet at our Welcome Center. We are excited about how the Branch Campus is growing. Join us tonight for the first of many Branch Nights. Enjoy an evening complete with lawn games, s'mores bar, food trucks, and worship hosted by our Branch Campus. Next Sunday, we will begin collecting new unwrapped toys for Toys for Tots. You will find collection bins conveniently located throughout our campus. For questions or information, you can visit the Welcome Center. Next Monday, the 28th, be sure to watch TBN for Praise the Lord with Pastor Benny at 10 p.m. Be sure to tune in to see some of your Rock Springs favorites. Just as the wise men of long ago brought their gifts to Jesus, we have the opportunity to bring our gifts to him on Sunday, December 4th in every worship service. This year's manger offering is going towards the children's building, and we encourage you to pray about how you can be a part of what God is doing on that day. Want help with Christmas shopping? Today in the lobby, we have devotionals for children and adults for just $10. If this is your first time here, or if you made a decision today, make sure to fill out the welcome card from the seat back in front of you and leave it so we can have a record of your visit. That's it for us. For more information about what's coming up, you can follow us on social media or visit our website at rockspringsonline.com. Well, good morning. Welcome to Rock Springs Church. Why don't you stand to your feet? Find somebody that's colder than you are.
may be seated. Aren't you thankful that our God is an everlasting God that will never leave us or forsake us? Listen, it's good to see you this morning. Are you excited to be in the house of the Lord today? Hey, look, I know it's cold. It's cold outside. You haven't got warmed up yet, but you can do better than that. Are you excited to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Well, hey, it's, it's great to see you this morning. We're so glad that you're here. Thank you for being at Rock Springs Church. If you're joining us right here in person, thank you. If you're watching via rockspringslive.com or via Facebook or something like that, thank you for joining us as well. Folks, we have people that watch us online every single week, and we appreciate them. We have people at our other campuses all over the state, and we appreciate them. Can we let them know how grateful we are that they're joining us this morning? Thank you so much. Hey, I know there's a lot going on this morning. Maybe you had some trouble getting in here. You had to walk a little farther because of the construction or, or you noticed the new paint that's happening out there in the foyer. But look, we're just grateful that you're here. We're glad that you, that you went through all that hassle and you're here with us this morning. Well, we, we couldn't be more happy that you're jo joining us today. If you're visiting with us this morning, we want you to know that you're our honored guest. And we don't ask anything of you as a visitor, except that you would look in that pew back in front of you that, and look for that card that says, Welcome to Rock Springs. Take a minute and fill out some information on that card, and then drop it in, in the offering bag as it passes your way here in just a minute. That's really our best way of knowing that you're here. It's just a record of your visit. We won't call you or come by your house this week. We just simply want to know that you're here. So if you do that, we greatly appreciate it. We're going to continue to worship the Lord, continue to sing praises to Him this morning. And, and we believe that we serve a God that can meet needs. If you've got a need in your life, would you signify that to the Lord with your hands stretched to Him? Folks, uh, these hands are just a symbol of needs that every single one of us has. But we serve a God that can meet those needs. So let's go to Him in prayer this morning. Jesus, we love you. We thank you for today. We thank you for the opportunity to worship you, the opportunity to sing, to come together with other believers and just simply worship your name. God, I pray that as we sing these songs, that, that your presence would come in this place, that you would inhabit the praises of your people. God, I pray that you would meet needs today, that you would touch hearts and lives. And God, we thank you in advance for all that you're going to do. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand again this morning and sing with us?
Anything else is the presence of God. Amen. What you need, no matter what you're going through, what you need more than anything else is the presence of God. You said, Brother Benny, I, I want his presence today. Well, I've got good news. 
He inhabits the praises of his people. And folks, when our praise, not to any man, not to any organization, not to any society, but when our, not to any party, but when our praise goes up to the Lord, his presence comes down. So, so Lori, Lori, let's, let's sing that again, folks, and let's all sing it. Let's praise him because in your life and in my life, we desperately need his presence more than anything else. Holy Spirit, you are well. thank you so much for being here today I'm delighted that you've given this day to the Lord I want to encourage you at 430 today we're gonna to have a fun time we have a branch service a service at the branch they're gonna be having fun they're gonna be having games I think the varsity up in Atlanta the varsity restaurants gonna come down it's always always good to clog up your arteries and uh, <laughs> give you an opportunity to do that some taco bar I don't know it's just gonna be a fun time then at 6 p.m. we'll have a service no preaching just praise to the Lord and it's gonna be a fun time bringing an entire family s'mores bar it's gonna be a wonderful wonderful time and I want you to come today at 430 I know I'm coming and we're gonna have a great time used to be an old preacher back home Larry Campbell used to say this he said I'd rather be with God's people as any people this side of heaven I'd rather be with God's people as any people this side of heaven. So it gives you an opportunity to be with God's people and fellowship and get to know each other, and we're going to have a great time. I'm going to worship, I'm going to pray, and then we will worship the Lord through our giving. You're streaming, you can give. You're in one of our campuses, you can give. Let me tell you a neat story. Last night I spoke at Impact Christian Ministries to our campus there. Had the opportunity to feed homeless people a Thanksgiving meal. I wish you could have seen it. I wish you could have seen Brother Benny with the hairnet on and the gloves. <laughs> but, oh, I got a far greater blessing than they did. But, folks, we had 22 people who prayed to receive Christ last night. <laughs> 22 people. And it was just a wonderful, wonderful time. That's what you're giving to. You say, when I give in this offering, what am I giving to? To help feed homeless people. To help people get medical attention who doesn't have any insurance to help girls who are on the streets and don't have anywhere to go to help children in Haiti who don't know where they're going to get their next clothes from that's what you're giving to when you're giving an offering at Rock Springs Church it's what you're giving to so let's pray Jesus we love you bless the gift and the giver in Christ's name amen
Well, good morning, and thank you so much for being in the Lord's house. What a great day God's given us. Amen? Great day. And I want to especially give a shout-out to the Branch Campus, and I appreciate the special activities that the Branch Campus is providing tonight, beginning at 4.30. I'm going to be there. I want you to be there. We're going to have a wonderful, wonderful time. I started a series of messages last Sunday morning. We got this presidential election behind us. Praise God, it's over, right? Amen. Everybody can clap over that. It's over. And I began to think about what in the world is going to happen next. And last Sunday, I talked about an event much bigger than the presidential election. That's the second coming of Christ, the rapture of the church. Today, I want you to take your Bible, and I want you to stand I want us to go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and I want to call your attention to verses 1 through 4. I pray, you know, folks, I pray that you, we provide sermon outlines. I pray you bring your Bible and write in your Bible, write on those, those outlines. You say, Brother Benny, I'll remember everything you say. <clears throat> By this afternoon, I won't remember everything I said. It's so important, folks. I learned a long time ago that a short pencil is better than a long memory. So where do you come up with all the stuff you come up with, Pastor Benny? Well, if you're going to quote right, you've got to note right. You've, if you're going to quote right, you've got to note right. And I write it down. I write it down because if you don't, the devil will steal it from you. Amen? He'll steal it from you. But in 2 Thessalonians 2, notice what it says. Now, we, we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus and by the gathering together unto him... What are we dealing with? We're dealing with the coming of the Lord. That ye be not soon shaken in mind or troubled, neither by spirit nor by word. And that's what he's saying to the church. Don't you be troubled. Nor by letter as from us, as the day of Christ is at hand. Church at Thessalonica had received a letter, but it, it wasn't from Paul. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come, except there come a fallen away first. And the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes, opposeth, and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he is God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Let us pray. Lord, would you speak to us and through us today? Give your word a free course to travel. May it find a lodging place in the hearts of men, women, boys, and girls. And for all you do, we're going to give you glory, honor, and praise. For I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. I want to talk to you about America out, the Antichrist in. America out, the Antichrist in. Certainly today, America is the world's superpower. We've been the sole superpower since the Soviet Union was dissolved in the early 90s. The Soviet Union, that 15-nation communistic union, was dissolved in the early 90s. 
But God actually prophesied, ladies and gentlemen, that that was going to happen. In Jeremiah chapter 23, verses 7 and 8, the scripture prophesied that Russian Jews would return. You've got to understand that Russia is directly north of Israel. And the scripture prophesied that Russian Jews would return back to their homeland. And they've done that by the hundreds of thousands. That would not have happened. That could not have happened had not the Soviet Union been dissolved. But this is all I want you to see, ladies and gentlemen. It happened just like God said it was going to happen. The Word of God's more up-to-date than the USA Today tomorrow. The Word of God is more up-to-date than the USA Today tomorrow. Now, here's what I want you to understand. We read and we think about America. This certainly superpower. And we ask ourselves, Pastor, is America mentioned in the Bible? Is America, this nation, this land that I love, this superpower, certainly the greatest nation on earth, the most powerful nation on earth, certainly it's mentioned in the Bible. Well, there's three places that it could possibly be mentioned. In Isaiah chapter 18, verse 7, it says, At the time the Lord of heaven's armies will receive gifts from a land divided by rivers. The Bible tells us that during the millennial reign, there's a group of people that are going to bring gifts to Jesus. These people are going to be tall. They're going to be smooth-skinned people. They're going to be from a nation that's greatly feared. They're going to be from a nation that's divided by a great river. And some believe that could be the Mississippi River. That this could be America, perhaps. But then there's another place. In Ezekiel chapter 38, verse 13. Here's what I want you to understand, folks. 2,500 years ago, God said during the end, Russia and Iran... Two nations. Iran was Persia up to 1935. And in 1935, Persia becomes Iran. So 2,500 years in, ava- in advance, God said there's a couple of nations, Russia and Iran, that are going to form a coalition. And they're going to attack Israel. <laughs> I think it's ironic that Russia and Iran are in partnership developing weaponry literally while I speak. Folks, after everything's said and done, the Bible's true after all. (laughs) After everything's said and done, the Bible's true. Folks, this is not coincidence. Even if you're an agnostic, this is not coincidence. And the Bible says that those nations will attack Israel. And he speaks of Tarshish. Tarshish is the westernmost nation, believed to be Britain, which is the westernmost nation. The symbol for Britain is a line. And the Bible says, out of that line comes young lines. And from Britain came Austria, Canada, and the United States. So that scripture could be talking about America and America standing with Israel. But then there's Revelation chapter 12, verses 13 and 14. And it says, and when the dragon, which is the devil saw that he was cast upon the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. Now, who is the woman? The woman is the nation of Israel. Who did she bring forth? She brought forth Jesus Christ. Keep in mind, folks, without Israel, there is no Jesus. And any time any political person is not in support of Israel, you run from him. You run from him. It matters not who he is. Because those who bless Israel, God said he would bless That's biblical, ladies and gentlemen, that we support Israel. And Israel has supported us. Now look what the scripture says. And the woman were given two wings of a great eagle. Some believe that that great eagle is America. That will protect Israel, perhaps. But here's what's so interesting, folks. 
as we study the 66 chapters of this book, really there's no clear description of America. No clear description. It ought to be all over this book. If America was going to be the superpower that we are during the end, folks, we'd be all over this book. But it's obvious. America's not going to be the superpower during the end. Why? I'll tell you why I believe. It's because the rapture is going to take place. The rapture is going to take place, ladies and gentlemen, and the church is going to be gone. Now, you give me, with all the slaps we give to America, we still provide 95% of the funding for all evangelism. 95% of all the funding for evangelism around the world comes from America. 40% of Americans say they're Christians. And I'm not judging anybody's Christianity. But I know if that's true, and Jesus Christ came back right now, 128 million people would leave America. And when 128 million people leave America, it's going to destabilize our military. It's going to destabilize our law enforcement. It's going to destabilize social services. It's going to destabilize our country. And folks, America will no longer be the supreme power because what made it so special is gone. What made it so special was the people that love the God of America. That being the Christian people. Now you say, Pastor, now the rapture takes place. Hypothetically, 128 million Americans go to heaven along with people from all around the world. That's going to provide a vacuum. America's going to be out. Who's going to be in? A man by the name of the Antichrist. Out of the chaos, a world leader will rise on the scene and bring peace. Now, who's he going to be, Pastor Benny? Well, Daniel 9 and 26 tells us this. He will be from the people that destroyed the second temple. The Babylonians destroyed the first temple. The Romans destroyed the second temple. Temple. He will be from the revived Roman Empire. He literally, ladies and gentlemen, is not going to be Chinese. He's not from Saudi. He's not even going to be a Muslim. He's not going to be a Jew. The scripture says in Daniel 3, 11 and 37, he won't regard any God. He will not regard the God of his fathers. He will be an atheist that totally worships himself. Now, folks, I'm not trying to sensationalize anything. I'm not smart enough to preach anything but the Bible. But I'm too smart to preach anything but the Bible. And you say, Pastor, what you're dealing with today is not of interest and it's not relevant to me. Bless God, it will be. You better get up real close because it's going to be of great relevance to you. Now, the Antichrist will rise on the scene and I want you to notice seven quick things about him. Number one, his revelation. His revelation. Verse 3 says, the man of sin will be revealed. That word revealed comes from the Greek word apocalypse. We get the word revelation. How are we going to know who he is, Pastor Benny? Verse 4 tells us, we'll know who he is. Because he opposeth, opposeth, and exalteth himself. 
and he goes to the temple and demand, demands that he's worshipped. If you've been to Israel with me, I hope you have. If you haven't, we're going in April. The most precious spot of ground in the entire world is the Temple Mount. It's a 35-acre piece of ground. It's the most sacred spot of ground in the world. It's sacred to the Christians because the Christians literally believe this is where Abraham offered Isaac. The Muslims believe Abraham offered Ishmael. The Muslims believe that Mohammed ascended to heaven on a horse from this spot. From the Temple Mount, Jesus Christ was crucified. But on this Temple Mount, ladies and gentlemen, the Dome of the Rock is there. That's a Muslim house of worship. It's sacred to the Muslims. But the Bible tells us during the end, the temple will be built there. The temple will be built. And the Jewish people will worship. But the Bible tells us that the Antichrist will set up himself or an image of himself in the temple and demand that he be worshipped. See, folks, that's his revelation. That's how we'll know it's him. You say, well, pastor, what about his rebellion? When the church is raptured out, when the church is gone, the Antichrist will rise on the scene, and he will say to the Jewish people, I'll protect you. And if you know anything about Israel, it's the only democracy in the Middle East. It's surrounded by countries that hate it. That's why they've got a wall around the country. Because the Arab nations want to destroy Israel. The Arab nations consider Israel the little Satan. And they consider America the big Satan. And folks, I want to say something. You hear me closely. No matter who is president, that's beside the point. According to Romans chapter 13, it's the responsibility of the government to protect us. It's that responsibility for America to be a safe place. Well, there's a wall around Israel for their safety. And after the church is gone, after America's gone, the Antichrist will rise on the scene, according to Daniel 9 and 27, and he'll sign a covenant with the people of Israel that he will protect them. But after three and a half years, he'll break that covenant, and he'll demand that all people worship him. I see his revelation. I see his rebellion. But I see his restraint. You say, Pastor, why can't the Antichrist come on the scene right now? Why can't he come? Well, the Bible tells us in verse 6, ladies and gentlemen, and now you know what, we ho what withholdeth, that he might re be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doeth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. The Antichrist can't rise on the scene because the Holy Spirit is restraining him. The Holy Spirit is restraining him. And you hear me clearly. No matter what you're facing, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And if the Holy Spirit can restrain the Antichrist, he can restrain you from anything that's pulling you down. Why is the Holy Spirit restraining the Antichrist? 
He's restraining the Antichrist until the church is taken out. His revelation, his rebellion, his restraint, but then his resource. Say, Pastor, is the Antichrist alive today? Is the Antichrist alive today? I think he is. Is he on, he on the planet today? I think he is. But you got to realize, folks, what's going to make him the Antichrist is when the devil incarnates him. You say, what are you talking about? Well, in Luke chapter 22, verse 3, it says, Then entered Satan into Judas. Just as Satan entered into Judas, Satan is going to enter into this man, the Antichrist, who no doubt is alive today. But Satan has not entered into him because the church has not been raptured out. Fifthly, his restoration. His restoration. He said, Pastor, what are you talking about? This man that will rise on the scene and people will worship him. Brother Benny, what's going to cause people to worship the Antichrist in such a fashion? Revelation chapter 13, notice what it says. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast. The beast is the Antichrist. Rise up out of the sea having seven heads and ten horns and upon his head ten crowns and upon his head were the name of blasphemy. Verse 2 says, And the beast which I saw was likened to a leopard and his feet were likened to the feet of the bear and his mouth is the mouth of a lion and the dragon gave him power and his seed and great authority. The devil is the dragon. Look what it says. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast. Read it closely. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded. No, not really wounded. As it were wounded. The devil through the Antichrist will fake his death and fake his resurrection as a clone to Jesus Christ and the people will worship him. Number six, his retaliation. Revelation chapter 13, verse 15 through 17 says, And power was given unto him He had power to give life unto the image of the beast. And the image of the beast could speak. Verse 16 says, And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. Listen to me closely. That word mark comes from the Greek word sharagma, which is a tattoo. So when a pastor Benny said, if you've got a tattoo, you're going to hell. Liar, liar, pants on fire. <laughs> I didn't say that. But the mark will be a tattoo. And our culture is so receptive to tattoos. The mark will be a tattoo. And you've got to have that mark to buy and sell. But if you accept that mark, you've eternally doomed your soul to hell. But could you imagine? There'll be children born during this time. And your babies need medical care. But to get them care, you've got to accept the mark. To get milk for those babies, you've got to accept the mark. To get food, you've got to accept the mark. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you something. It's going to be a terrible time to be alive. 
We better know that we know that we know that we're right with God. There's one other thing, and I want to end positive. His removal. His removal. Look what Revelation chapter 19 verse 11 says. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And him that sat on him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness he doeth judge and make war. What's going to happen? The rapture is going to take place. Jesus is going to come and get his church. We're going to go to heaven. We're going to have the marriage supper of the Lamb. We're going to eat banana pudding and never gain a pound. (laughs) It's going to be wonderful. And after seven years, we're going to mount up. And we're going to come back. Oh, folks, let me tell you. You know, when an army goes forth to battle here, the troops are out there fighting and the generals in the background. But no, 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 not in this battle. The troops are behind and the generals out front. (laughs) The only one going to be battling is the Lord Jesus Christ. And when he speaks, the battle is over. Oh, you say, Pastor, what's going to happen to the Antichrist? Well, let's find out. Verse 20 says, And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, that which he deceived them and had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire, burning with fire and brimstone. You know, while the Antichrist is doing all his miracles in all the world's worshiping him during the tribulation period. The people are going to ask a question. It's in Revelation 13 and 4. (laughs) This is the question. Who is like the beast? And who is able to make war with him? (laughs) I wish they'd realize, folks, There's an answer to their question. It's Revelation chapter 19, verse 11. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. Who is like the beast? Who's able to make war against him? The precious Lamb of glory, Jesus Christ. Now, here's what I want you to see, folks. As our musicians are coming, I read a story this week about an old janitor named Bernard. And Bernard, he was a janitor at a local school, and it was his job to lock up the gym after basketball practice. And Bernard would wait for the young people to finish basketball practice, and then he'd lock up the gym. And Bernard would always read his Bible. And one day he was reading his Bible, and he was reading the book of Revelation. And one of those players said to him, Bernard, (laughs) do you understand what you're reading? Do you understand what you're reading? Bernard said, yeah, I understand This old janitor. And one of those players said to Bernard, Why, Bernard, there's theologians that don't understand that. There's scholars that don't understand that. There's men that are highly, and women that are highly educated that don't understand that. But you understand it? He said, Yeah. He said, Bernard, What does the book of Revelation mean? He said, it means Jesus is going to win. And let me tell you something. You're going to win too if you know Jesus. But let me tell you, folks, this is not something to play around with. We need to know that we know. Because Jesus could come today. And if Jesus comes today and you're not right with him, you'll be left here. 
And you don't want to be left here. You want to know that you know that you know that you're right with God. Not hope so. You say, well, Brother Benny, I joined the church a while back. I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in your heart right with God. I'm a good person. I'm not interested in that. How good do you have to be? How much good's enough? I'm not interested in that. I'm interested, are you right with God? Just for a moment, every head's bowed and every eye's closed. With every head bowed and every eye closed, no one looking. No one looking, please. No one looking. Pastor Benny, I'm here today. And I don't know that I'm right with God. I don't know that if Jesus came, I'd be left. I don't know. I just, there's a disturbance in my heart. I don't know where I am with God. I don't know that I'm right, Pastor Benny. And all I ask is, would you pray for me? And right there in the privacy of your pew, with nobody looking but me and God, Brother Benny, I don't know that I'm right, but I want prayer. Please pray for me, and you'd slip your hand up. Just slip your hand up. God bless you. God bless you. I'm waiting on your hand. I don't know that I'm right with God. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I don't know that I'm right with God. Just slip your hand up, and I'm going to pray for you. I don't know that I'm right. Please pray for me, Pastor. You just slip your hand up. Just slip your hand up. I'm waiting on your hand. I see your hand. I see your hand. I see your hand. Listen to me very closely. If you raised your hand, repeat this prayer with me. Pray this prayer with me. Repeat this prayer. Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner, but I'm sorry for my sin. I'm so sorry I want to change. I believe that you died for my sin, and I confess them to you right now. Come into my heart, Lord, and forgive me. Now, thank you, Lord, for coming into my heart. Thank you for forgiving me. If you pray that prayer, hold your hand up real high where I can see it. Hold it up real high. Wait, folks. Listen to me very closely. If you prayed that prayer, stand to your feet. Just stand up right where you're at. Stand up. That's it. Just stand up. Every one of you, stand up. Just every one of you, stand up. No, just stand up right where you're at. I'm waiting on you to stand up. Just stand up right where you're at. Stand up. Somebody's coming to you right there. Somebody's coming. Just stand up right where you're at. Somebody's coming. Somebody's Courtney. I wonder today, is there others? You said, Brother Benny, I prayed the prayer. I just want somebody to come to me. Hold your hand up real high. Hold your hand up real high. Hold your hand up real high. Okay, how many say, Pastor Benny, I'm here today. And while you was preaching, I thought about family members and friends that don't know the Lord. I thought about family members and friends that don't know the Lord. Please pray for them. You'd hold your hand up. Many, many hands. How many say, Brother Benny, I'm just going through a tough time. Pray for me, and you'd slip your hand up. Many hands. Folks, I want everyone to stand. Every one of us are going to stand. Thank you for joining us today. I trust you found this service to be inspiring and encouraging. If you made the decision and accepted Christ as your personal Savior, or you just would like prayer, feel free to contact us. There's an email address at the bottom of your screen, and we look so forward to hearing from you. May God bless you, and we can't wait to see you next week.